Hey guys, hello and welcome to another brand new video. <clears throat> Today is Wednesday, which means we are going to do a Let's Chat. <clears throat> but, we're going to do the Let's Chat differently this week. I don't want to pull the way the conversation away from what needs to be discussed right now. So I decided I'm going to do something different with my time. And my Let's Chat. <clears throat> This week's Let's Chat video is going to be a video version of the episode of Into the Abyss that dropped this morning. This video will not have a sponsor. As I'll say inside, <clears throat> inside the video, because it applies to the episode, <clears throat> I don't want to pull away the focus with a with a uh, sponsorship and I don't want to make money off of this issue this movement so we'll be back in just a moment with this week's episode of Into the Abyss a video version thank you guys very much for watching and God bless This video is a part of the Tyler Strong's Productions Network. As a part of the Tyler Strong's Productions Network, we put out five videos a week on YouTube, Monday through Friday, releasing at noon. We also release a brand new episode of Quarantine Musings every Friday right now at midnight. Thank you guys for checking out everything we put out as part of the Tyler Strong's Productions Network. At this point, we currently sit as a very fractured and divided nation. The death of George Floyd has sparked protests after protests. Protests have been held within every 50 state and even countries across the globe. People are raising their voices to be heard, both peacefully and not. Let's discuss this situation. Hello and welcome to the final episode of Season 1 of Into the Abyss, a part the Tyler Strong's Productions Network. This is being put out both on YouTube as a video as well as on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts as a audio podcast. I am your host, Tyler Moore. Now, I do want to state early on in this episode that I have chosen not to have this episode be sponsored both through the audio version and the video version. I do not want to detract focus from the issues that we need to talk about with a sponsorship, and I do not want to profit off of the discussion we need to have today. This episode of Into the Abyss comes at a time where this country is devolving into chaos, and there is a ton to talk about. Plus, we can't forget that COVID-19 is still a thing throughout all of this. So where do we start? Perhaps we could start with what sparked the flame, the murder of George Floyd by Derek Chauvin, a police officer sworn to protect the citizens of this nation, while three other officers watched him do it. However, this is not where the story begins. George Floyd was just another domino in a long line of dominoes that fell to get us to this point. And perhaps that's something that people don't fully understand. This is not over the death of one man, as gruesome and as unnecessary as that one man's death may have been. This is over the inherent and systemic racism that has been a part of this country for a long time. Recently, it's just been swept under the rug and not been dealt with, which has caused the anger and the pain to bubble up, and it's finally reaching a boiling point. Instances like Christian Cooper, who had Amy Cooper no relation, Tell him, I'm going to tell the cops there is an African American threatening me, knowing that that would put the fear in him. Instances like Tamir Rice, a 12 year old shot and killed by police because he had an airsoft gun. Instances like Trayvon Martin, an innocent and unarmed teen attacked and killed by George Zimmerman, who deemed him suspicious because he was black and wearing a hoodie. Instances like Eric Garner, a man put into a chokehold by police for resisting arrest. 
And despite him being on the ground and able to be restrained, they left him in a chokehold while he said, I can't breathe, 11 times. And he died as a result. In instances like Brianna Taylor, a woman who was shot and killed during a no-knock raid, where the people the officers were after were already in police custody. Police did not identify themselves, and the person, ta person Taylor was with fired a shot in self-defense, as there was believed someone was breaking in, at which point the police rained down bullets with eight of them hitting Taylor. These are only a few of the instances that helped cause the buildup leading into what happened with George Floyd. So let's talk George Floyd. George Floyd was a 46-year-old man. The official medical examiner's report ruled his death a homicide caused by a cardiopulmonary arrest while being restrained by officers who subjected him to neck compression. A second autopsy ruled that he died from asphyxia due to the compression of the neck affecting blood flow and oxygen going into the brain, as well as the compression of the back which interferes with breathing. So let's go over what happened here. How did this situation get to this point? Let's start with this. What was he being arrested for? He gave a counterfeit $20 bill. Now there is no evidence he knew it was counterfeit, either now or then. Cops had him handcuffed on the ground, and witnesses said he was calm. They tried to get him in a police car, which is standard operating procedure, but he claimed he had claustrophobia and they struggled to get him in the car. He wound up back on the ground, at which point Derek Chauvin placed his knee on Floyd's neck and started applying pressure. Two other officers applied pressure to his back and to his legs, while another stood off and watched. Floyd repeatedly said he could not breathe. Their actions resulted in his death. The next day, videos of the incident went viral. The general public went crazy. And as a result of the public pressure, the Minneapolis Police Department fired the four officers involved, but not before issuing a statement that he had been physically resisting arrest. At this point, no charges were made against any of the officers. The incident took place on May 25th, and yet no arrest was made for his murder, despite it being on video and public video, until four days later on May 29th. Even then, they only offered up a flimsy charge of third-degree murder against Chauvin, a charge only applicable in three states, Florida, Minnesota, and Pennsylvania, and is basically the smallest type of murder charge. It is a catch-all murder charge. It took until June 3rd, over a week later, to upgrade after the incident, a week after the incident, to upgrade him to a charge of second-degree murder which is a murder that was not premeditated. It took until that day to charge and arrest the other three officers involved for aiding and betting as well. Now before we get into the protesting aspect, I do have to say I am satisfied with the charge that Chauvin currently has. There are people who want it to be a first degree murder. However, I don't believe you can convict on that charge here. Despite how gruesome a death it was, you cannot prove that it was premeditated. You cannot prove without a doubt that he had planned this murder in advance. And thus, you cannot prove first degree murder. As such, you have to go with a charge that does not include that premeditated part, which is a lot easier to prove that he killed him at the very least. You don't want to go into an instance where, of like double jeopardy where you try too hard to convict him on a charge that you can't really do, and then you get him for nothing. Now let's address the protests. These protests have multiple different ideas that they want to get across. They want to address police brutality. They want to address the inherent and systemic racism within this country. They want to stop the unnecessary deaths of black men and women. They want to reform the system. Reform the system. That's an interesting thought, and you may be wondering what it means. The criminal justice system is more likely to convict someone if they are black than if they are white. Someone who is black is more likely to be arrested than someone who is white. 
cops are more likely to use deadly force on someone who is black than someone who is white. If you ask me, that's a pretty unjust system for a country that prides itself on freedom and justice. Now these protests started off peacefully, but not everything can remain peaceful. Here's something to take into account in that regard. People tried protesting peacefully, and they got told that they weren't allowed to do it every which way they tried. Whether it be hands up, don't shoot rallies calling for justice for Michael Brown. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers wearing I Can't Breathe shirts after the death of Eric Garner. Colin Kaepernick and so many other players in the NFL taking a knee during the national anthem. The cast of Hamilton making a statement at the end of a show because Mike Pence was there. People bringing up these injustices during award show speeches. Or just a plain, peaceful, Black Lives Matter rally. No matter what avenue was taken, people were told that it just wasn't the right way to protest. The same people who said that are now the people saying, Well, if they had protested peacefully, I would have taken them seriously. I'm sorry, but you can't have it both ways. You cannot delegitimize every peaceful avenue that they take and then tell them that they need to protest peacefully for you to take them and their case seriously. That willful ignorance is a big part of what led us to where we are today. And willful ignorance is very much present in the next part of this. The All Lives Matter movement. Those who shout All Lives Matter, you are 100% correct. All lives do matter. But is your life in danger on a daily basis? No? Then your argument is invalid here. Saying all lives matter in this instance is like raining water on your house instead of the house down the street that is on fire and saying all houses matter. Yes, all houses do matter, but yours is not the one at risk. Theirs is. The All Lives Matter movement is a movement designed to try to invalidate Black Lives Matter and stir the pot. It's meant to make the Black Lives Matter movement seem racist because it's excluding all these other races. But Black Lives Matter is meant to put a focus on the fact that black lives are not valued within this country. That black lives are at risk every single day. And they don't even need to do anything wrong for that to be the case. I saw a post recently that said, Has anyone mentioned that the police will leave you alone if you don't do illegal stuff? Would you like a prime example of how that's not true? Brianna Taylor. She was asleep and innocent. The police, the, the people the police were after were not there. They were in police custody. You cannot argue that if you do not want the police, you shouldn't do anything illegal. Because police harass innocent black men and women every single day all a part of that systemic and inherent racism that needs to be done away with. Last month, Donald Trump posted a video of his face imposed over Bill Pullman's for Pullman's memorable speech in the final act of Independence Day. Perhaps we should look at the words of that video. Despite those words being said almost 24 years ago regarding an alien attack on the Earth, I think the words stated are applicable to today's problem. I'll leave the recitation to Bill Pullman. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps fate that today is the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist, and should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be
be known as an American holiday. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight, we're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Let's take a closer look at the text. We cannot be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Why is it that the color of one's skin divides us so much? Why is it that members of our society consider people to be less based solely on the color of their skin? Here's the truth. Our petty differences do divide us. And it's time that that stops. We need to be united in a common interest. And perhaps that common interest could be something that we state in our Pledge of Allegiance. Liberty and justice for all. Why is that a bad idea? I seriously want to know. Why is the idea of liberty and justice for all such a bad thing and such a problem? That's what these people are fighting for. Right now, there is a serious issue within this country. When they stood out for all these issues... People put them down because they either don't believe their cause is real, or they believe that it should remain status quo. However, High School Musical proved that we cannot and should not stick to the status quo. We must grow. We must move forward as a society. This is a fight that has been going on for far too long. So why does it continue? To those who question the idea of liberty and justice for all, please tell me why. Another part of the speech that I want to touch on is when Bill Pullman said, You will once again be fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. That's a key part of this movement that we are seeing right now. So many black men and women have died, died for no reason, no good reason anyways, have been killed for no good reason. I don't want to say that there is no reason, because there really is a reason. Because police brutality is both a real thing and an issue within this country that needs to be addressed. Because racism is still alive and well and not being addressed within this country. Because that idea from earlier of liberty and justice for all is not being fulfilled. During our formative years, we were forced to recite that pledge. And I won't even get into why that's not a good idea. But if you are going to go out and force kids to recite that pledge, you best make sure you're actually pulling through on your end of the bargain. You want people to pledge undying allegiance to this country, yet you aren't willing to fight for them. You aren't willing to uphold the words that you forced them to say. And then you wonder why these people are mad. Why these people are outraged. Why these people would risk their lives to protest. Because they have no other option. It's either roll over and let them be discriminated against and killed for the color of their skin. Or stand up and fight for their rights. One more part from the speech that I would like to quote. As the day when America declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Right now, America is standing up. Right now, America is declaring that enough is enough. That we need to fix the injustice within this country. That we need to fix the issue of police brutality. That we need to address racism. This is not a debate. This is a declaration. It is time for change, America. It's time to reel back in our police forces. It's time to legitimately address the systemic and inherent racism that is prevalent within this country. It's time to step up. And fight for the idea of liberty and justice for all. This is not a battle. This is a war. 
and the police in Asheville, North Carolina have committed a war crime as per the Geneva Convention. On Tuesday, June 2nd, when the curfew was in, fact, in effect in Asheville, North Carolina, police attacked a medical station. The medical permission, personnel had permission to stay after curfew to take care of any injured. However, police attacked their medical personnel, destroyed their water supplies, destroyed their medical supplies. They tear gassed these people who did not resist or fight against these officers who had done nothing wrong. In addition to being a war crime based on the Geneva Convention, it also goes against the Medical Neutrality Protection Act of 2011. This is not the only instance of police officers going after unarmed and peaceful people. There are instances in many cities, including Minneapolis. This is a legitimate thing where peaceful protests are being peaceful protesters are getting attacked by police. This is why a serious reform on our police system is absolutely necessary. Minneapolis actually agreed with that as they voted to disband their police force and try to figure out how to proceed. The shirt I am wearing as I record this came from a site called Unlock Hope. They fight for hope and for people. I bought quite a few shirts from them over the years, but this one shirt is special. It says, Silence is Betrayal. By choosing to remain silent on these issues, you are taking the side of racism. You are betraying your brothers and sisters of this country. We cannot remain silent anymore and ignore what is going on. We have to speak up. We have to make our voices heard. We must enact change. I'll leave you with this. If you were in the shoes of these black men and women, would you lie down and sit quietly? Or would you fight? If your life was in danger every single day from the people sworn to protect you, would you roll over and die? Or would you fight for your right to live? Your right to have rights within this country? Thank you for watching and for listening to the final episode of Season 1 of Into the Abyss. Into the Abyss will return. Thank you and God bless.